Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Tom, and I've got two uh, adult family homes in Menominee, and yes, it's my video. Um, so, uh, do you feel like we have the uh, a class action here, or is that is that? I, what what I'll tell you is that uh, I was prepared to file a class action lawsuit a year ago, um, and I don't know as much right now, but this looks like that one did at that stage, at the beginning stages, and what I know so far, it certainly looks like it. Because I, I mean, I have you hit the nail on the head with me. I've got, since 03, I've got a couple of uh, Northern Center people. They've cut their rates a couple of times, and now in March, they're looking at another 10. And then last year, I opened a second adult family home just down the street, and uh, they just, on March 1st, they're 17%. They're going to drop those rates, too, and I won't be able to keep that at house open. Well, the, and the consequences are? Yeah, and I mean, the other question I had for you too is, does the appeal just go to CHP uh, provider relations, or does it or No, it's the, the appeals, I, you have the choice of going through CHP and then going to Madison or going directly to Madison, and I, I chose going directly to Madison on all of the appeals. Um, and then, remember, it's uh, the provider, unfortunately, can just decide we're taking the rate or we're not taking the rate and therefore we're discharging people. So it's up to the, the guardians to decide whether they want to do appeals. Although what I'm suggesting to the providers is the first that the guardians hear about it shouldn't be the 30-day notice of discharge. Tell your providers, tell them, you know, you're in the danger zone Providers should tell guardians. <coughs> Providers should tell guardians they're in the danger zone rather than just bangle. Because what happened a year ago was I was scrambling around and didn't have things organized very well, and there were notices of discharge out there I had to deal with. Um, and so, frankly, the more time you can give the guardians to do their job, and I'm, I'm not talking about hanging in there till summer, I'm just talking about there's a lot going on right now and we want guardians to check into advocacy resources and decide what they they want to do. Yes? Uh, that's fine, Bill. My name is Amanda Romero. I'm a corporate guardian. I oversee myself on my caseload 30 clients. With a singular client, I spent hours kicking down the door to get them services, to have anyone acknowledge that he had a need, uh, to get him a placement. If I were a parent or, you know, a guardian of, of a home, and not that wasn't just my job that I'm dedicating 40 hours a week to, it would have been nearly impossible. You know, parent guardians, are, they're not given the resources if you had told me to do this before I had all these resources in place from my work, I would have told you you're crazy and that I couldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. So my question is how do you know parent guardians get the information, the resources, the contacts without any connections? They're just kind of thrown out there and left out there today. Well, that's part of the reason we're here today is to make uh, guardians aware that in fact there are some resources through Disability Rights Wisconsin and the Ombudsman Program and also independent attorneys like Mr. Plato, uh, who is an expert in this area that can uh, help navigate the process for appeals. Because I'm getting people who are, I mean, I get a temporary guardianship for 30 days, mm -hmm. and I'll encourage family members, I said, there's no reason that you couldn't be guardian and I'll help you at least set it up during this 30 day period. Yep. And I'm finding myself doing that more and more, or I'm just like charging you a monthly fee and then be like, okay, now I set it up, here you go. <laughs> yeah, well, and I, and I think the whole guardianship issue, you know, for, for some individuals, um, especially for individuals who have very elderly parents who are no longer able to kind of advocate on behalf of their ward, then maybe there's some consideration about successive guardians and successor guardians, that kind of thing. But, you know, in terms of when we're looking at issues that are going to impact that person's life in a very negative manner, that's when appeals need to be considered and additional resources need to be brought in, whether it's Disability Rights Wisconsin or direct you know, contact with uh, Rock Plato here. Yeah. 